Hey friends, welcome back to the show. Now millions of Taylor Swift fans woke up yesterday morning with hopes of snacking pre-sale tickets to her upcoming tour through the verified pre-sale event on Ticketmaster, but they were mostly met with frustration when going online as the site crashed and kicked fans off. Literally died. I literally just died dead and I couldn't breathe anymore and so I died. Rest in peace me. All right. Left them in the will. The family gathers around and reads it and then Now, it's Swift's first tour uh, in four years, by the way, since uh, before the pandemic. With 52 total concert dates, fans were hopeful after Ticketmaster announced that they were holding a pre-sale for verified fans only, something that's supposed to keep bots and resale sites from purchasing large sums of the tickets. But after fans waited for hours to become verified, only to be entered into a lottery to maybe purchase tickets for one of the top-ranked shows, many were disappointed and angry frankly, after the site just, as we said, kept crashing. Minutes before the pre-sale event started, Ticketmaster's fan support Twitter account said this, we are aware fans may be experiencing intermittent issues with the site and are urgently working to resolve. Then guys, hours later, Ticketmaster gave fans another update on Twitter, writing, quote, there has been historically unprecedented dam demand with millions showing up to buy tickets for the Taylor Swift Ticks pre-sale. Chaos like this surrounding ticket sales, it's nothing new, it's nothing uncommon. Especially in recent years, buying concert tickets has become increasingly competitive and expensive when Ticketmaster and its now parent company Live Nation merged together in 2010 and took over a growing share of the music business. So guys, let's bring in Krista Brown, senior policy analyst at the American Economic Liberties Project, an antitrust nonprofit. Hey, welcome to the show. Now. This isn't the first time, I guess, we've, we've heard upset over fans struggling to, to get access to tickets or, or rising fees associated with buying them through the site. Do you think that Ticketmaster could have handled the large number of people on their site differently, or was it just an influx that was unstoppable and nothing could be done to fix or prevent it? Well, as you said, it's really not the first time that this has happened. And I don't think the question is really if they could have, but it's why they didn't. And it's because they have this monopoly control of the ticketing services. And they're not afraid of losing their customer base or these Taylor Swift fans because the fans have nowhere else to get the tickets. They can go maybe to the secondary marketplace and get them for tens of thousands of dollars, but Ticketmaster's control of the primary market makes them unafraid of their lacking services. All right, let's 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 stay uh, there uh, on that topic. New York uh, Democratic Representative AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she posted on Twitter this daily reminder that Ticketmaster is a monopoly. Its merger with Live Nation should never have been approved and they needed to be reined in. Break them up. All right, so is there anything that can actually be done legally to break up the company since they merged more than a decade ago? I know that we're all, you know, suffering from issues that come from a monopoly like this, but what can actually be done? Yeah, well, there are a few things that can be done. Mm -hmm. Number one is what AOC said, and it's that we can unwind the merger. We, uh, my organization is part of a coalition that recently launched called Break Up Ticketmaster. And just as the coalition, we've directed over 17,000 letters to the Department of Justice, asking them to reopen an investigation into the monopoly and essentially unwind that merger. And that is something, there's precedent for that, that can happen, it will be with the Department of Justice. And we're hoping with this additional pressure from SWIFT fans, from regulators like AOC, and then from coalitions like ourselves, that it will push the, the DOJ into taking action. And, and then if that were to happen, explain to us how that would benefit those people who, who want to go to concerts. I mean, what is the benefit there of breaking up a large company like this? You know, there are a few, but, well, there are many benefits actually, and it's not just to the customers, but, um, but it's also to venues, to artists, speaking just on behalf of, behalf of customers, there will be an introduction of a competitive marketplace with this unwinding. Because right now, Live Nation, as a uh, promotion company and an artist management company, is sort of separate to Ticketmaster services. And they bundle them together, where Live Nation will be managing some of hundreds of the largest artists and say, 
we're not actually going to allow these artists into your venue if you don't also use Ticketmaster's ticketing services. And with the unwinding of that, you would lose some of the forces that they have over what would be a healthier competitive space. All right, now we've all been in this situation. We're checking out at Ticketmaster, and then it's like, oh, cool, my ticket's $40, and then you click checkout, and it's like $240 because of some fees, as they put it. And, and I'm just exaggerating with numbers there. Don't take those too seriously. But, I mean, even President Biden announced last month that he would begin cracking down on these so-called junk fees that are often hidden from consumers when they search for tickets. Is that the right move? Do you know where these fees actually come from and how they're justified by the company? Well, again, a huge reason they're not justified, but a big reason that they happen is because there isn't a competitor. And so they aren't worried about losing customers to what would be probably a, a fairer price. And customers right now are facing the situation where they'll see a ticket in their cart and the prices will be going up while it exists in their cart, or as you said, fees will be tacked on. And that all is really emblematic of the fact that they can do whatever they want and customers are at their mercy. So yes, definitely addressing junk fees is important. It's also an issue beyond Ticketmaster and ticketing, but we're excited to see the emphasis here right now. Krista Brown, thank you so much for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Answer to those Slack messages. We'll be right back after the break.